Hello, and welcome to Badger Talks Live, which brings exciting happenings, resources, and talent from your UW flagship campus to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. I am Summer Klepik from Oak Creek, Wisconsin, and I am a junior studying music education and theater at UW-Madison. I am pleased to introduce assistant professor Mark Hairston. Today, Mark will be reflecting and sharing on his practice of theater as a profession, as a means of expression, and as a unique path towards self-mastery. A graduate of New York's Columbia University School of the Arts, as well as Rutgers University, Mark is a director, performer, and an educator with a primary focus on American theater and theater of the African diaspora. Classically trained at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre in London, he has worked extensively as a professional actor with some of the nation's leading theatre companies. Mark's recent projects include serving as the artistic producer for Stephen Wolf Theatre Company's acclaimed production of We Are Proud to Present a Presentation, and as assistant director for the same theatre's production of Miss Black for President. Please welcome Mark Hairston. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Summer, for such a fantastic uh, introduction. Uh, and welcome everyone out there um, who are joining us now. I appreciate you all being here to uh, listen to little old me uh, talk for, for, for a little bit. Um, as Summer said, I am a assistant professor um, of directing and acting here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison uh, in the uh, Department of Theater and Drama there and um, where I started about a year and a half ago. So I'm just finishing my third full semester. Um, very interesting times to start teaching in um, and to start teaching theater in. Um, but, uh, but I feel very, very, very blessed and fortunate to be here and uh, to, to, you know, to love the work that I, that I, that I get to do. Um, so today what I wanna do is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I, I want to talk a bit about about you know uh, my work about theater itself about my work in theater um, and uh, how I um, how I go about um, you know approaching theater and using theater as a as a as a way to um, to further my kind of ultimate goal which is to be a master to be to 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 to, to to achieve self self mastery and all those things. So I want to talk about what that means. Uh, talk about theater. Talk about myself a little bit. And maybe read a couple things um, and all that. But um, hopefully you'll, you'll learn a little bit about about um, about all of those things about myself, about theater, and about um, how I can you know about, about mastery. Um, what the what this talk is not. It is not a uh, how to talk. Um, despite the title sounding like a kind of how to book. Um, theater and the Mastery of Mind, Body, and Spirit. Um, I probably will not be teaching you how to, to master the mind, body, and spirit, but I'll be talking about the intersection of that, you know, with the theater. Um, also, it's very interesting that, like, you know, I realized as I was preparing this talk that um, the title could actually be flipped a little bit. It could actually, if you change theater and mastery and switch those words around, um, the title could actually work just as well, be just as apt, and actually maybe even describe this particular, you know, talk even more. And so you would have mastery and the theater of mind, body, and spirit. Um, and it kind of makes sense to me because uh, it was mastery that came first and the idea of wanting to be a master and what mastery means and my contact with that. Um, and then later on theater, um, developing a theater that fits in with that. That, that goal. Um, uh, so mastery and the theater of mind, body, and spirit could actually be a very apt title for this um, particular talk. Um, but it is with mastery that I actually want to start today and this, this concept of mastery and what it is. I'm going to actually want to start reading a piece of theater, a piece of drama. Um, this is from a play that I actually love to teach in my classes. Uh, yeah, mastery in the theater of mind, body, and spirit. Yeah, um, this is actually a play that I love to um, to teach in my classes called "The Escape" or "Leap for Freedom." And I want to read just a little teeny bit of it um, because it brings in a little bit of theater or whatever. But it also it actually sets us up uh, for this uh, this idea of, of of mastery. Now, in this play, this this actually happens to be the very um, 
first play ever to be published by an African American. Um, and it was published in 1858. Uh, um, so, you know, you know, still, still, uh, you know, before uh, the Civil War, before slavery is officially abolished, all of that. Uh, you had this man, William Wells Brown, who wrote this, who escaped from slavery himself and wrote this amazing play um, that, uh, that is almost like a narrative, a, a, a representation of his, his actual experience um, and living in the South at the time and his escape and all that. Um, but it's also very much a critique of um, the system and of American society and things like that. Um, but I want to read a little bit of that. Um, so at this point in the play, um, one of the main, uh, there's kind of three main protagonists. Two of them are a, a, a young couple in love, Glenn and Melinda. Um, and they are both enslaved, but they both love each other. They both envision a life beyond enslavement, a life that includes each other, that includes self-fulfillment and all the other things that they would want in life. Um, and it's very early in the play that we meet them and we meet Glenn uh, letting her know that he has a plan to escape to Canada and he's gonna escape with her. And, uh, and you know, basically we watch them as they try to build to this point of escaping. So at this particular moment in the play, Glenn has actually, Glenn and Melinda have been separated. They um, have both been imprisoned um, for various reasons, locked up. And Glenn is set to be, he was set to be uh, whipped. Uh, and um, by by the whipping man. And uh, it was at that moment that uh, up until then we had seen Glenn kind of always speak a lot of words about how, you know, he's going to get his freedom and how um, if anybody comes after Melinda, he's going to, you know, whoop them and all this other big talk, right? But um, we hadn't actually seen him take any real action other than, you know, talking talking about his plans and what he wanted to do. And so at this point in the play, They've both been separated and imprisoned. Glenn is about to get whipped, and he makes it. He he takes an action. He makes a decision, uh, and uh, he escapes. He somehow meets up with Melinda again on a dark road as they both escape at the same time and find each other. And uh, this is how Glenn describes his final moments of imprisonment. And Glenn says, Melinda sees him, jumps out, and says. Oh, Glenn, it is my husband, it is. Glenn says, Melinda, Melinda, it is, it is. Oh God, I thank thee for this manifestation of thy kindness. Come, come, Melinda, we must go at once to Canada. I escaped from the overseer whom Dr. Gaines sent to flog me. Yes, I struck him over the head with his, with his own club and I made the wine flow freely. Yes, I pounded his old skillet well for him and then I jumped out of the window. It was a leap for freedom. Yes, Melinda, it was a leap for freedom. I've said master for the last time, I am free. I'm bound for Canada. Come, let's be off at once. And then they basically uh, go off and, and, and run off together and decide to, to continue their escape together. So why don't I read this, this brief little moment? I read this because in this moment we're seeing theater uh, touch on this idea of mastery. And it's a different kind of mastery than I'm going to get to in a bit. But this first idea of mastery or understanding of what mastery is uh, uh, comes from this little, this little scene. And um, what, uh, what happens is that we see um, Glenn in that moment that he decides that he's describing, we see that up until then he had been enslaved physically, um, he had been talking about, you know, we'd seen a kind of um, mental unenslavement and that he had realized that he was, that his, his enslavement could no longer be sustainable, that he needed to leave and he needed to escape. So there was a kind of breaking of the chains there. Um, but it's in this very moment that Glenn decides to take action, that he decides to actually act on his uh, previous words and actually escape, to actually um, unmaster himself, to actually um, become his own master. It's in the act of escaping that he claims himself, that he claims his own body, um, and that he, um, he, in a way, at its very fundamental essence, um, the act of freedom, being freedom is being master of oneself. 
um, and, and acknowledging and claiming one's own self. And so I read this little bit just to, to, to show that, to, to set us up for this talk of mastery and that mastery um, in itself, that one of the first steps of it or one of the manifestations of it is, um, is the, the claiming uh, of oneself and the decision to, to, to own oneself, all right? Um, and so hold on to that, this idea of owning oneself as an idea of mastery. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll continue this talk of, 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 this, of, of mastery, okay? So this play, uh, The Escape, I didn't come to till long, long down the road after long, you know, close to where we are now in the story, right? Um, so I actually want to fat, like rewind way back to the kind of beginning and kind of my early understandings of what this idea of mastery is. Um, and that actually came through, strangely enough, it came through, um, I was interested first through mastery by, through, through martial arts actually, um, through martial arts and martial artists and martial arts culture, whether that be film or television or video games. Um, one of my, that, that was kind of my earliest understanding of ma what mastery was. Um, and, you know, what happened is how I actually got involved and interested in martial arts. Um, and in turn, this, this path towards mastery is, uh, okay, so I was like, I was five years old. I was in the schoolyard and um, someone took my, some little boy took my, took a belonging of mine. And he started running through the, through the schoolyard, running, 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 looking back, laughing at me. He wouldn't give it back. I was chasing and chasing and chasing him. And so finally he ran through a gate. He slammed the gate behind him as I was running into it. I ran into the gate, did like a backflip, landed like on my face. Um, and, uh, and he made off with whatever belonging it was that was probably super inconsequential, but um, at the time seemed very important. Um, and it was later on that evening when my mother picked me up uh, from school that she saw me, she saw my face, she saw how upset I was, and she um, she actually decided then that I that she wanted to get me uh, into martial arts to teach me how to defend myself, um, and mostly to teach me how to defend myself. Um, but but little did she know um, it would teach me so so much more. So. I started off in Taekwondo um, and actually um, I got into Taekwondo from this amazing commercial that used to air in the 80s um, for Junri uh, Taekwondo, Junri Self-Defense. Now Taekwondo is a, a Korean form of martial art called Korean Karate in many points. And uh, Junri, like we would see these commercials on my mother and I all the time on TV. Um, and uh, it would have like, it'd be slow motion and Junri would be doing like you know, these flying kicks and it'd be very dramatic. Um, and the song, there was a song that was like, when you do Junri self-defense, you then you too will say, nobody bothers me, nobody bothers me. So it was kind of badass. Um, uh, and it ended with these two little cute little kids saying, nobody bothers me, nobody bothers me either. And so my mother saw this and put me into Junri, Junri Taekwondo. Um, but Jun Ri was one of the first masters that I had the pleasure of seeing and the pleasure of meeting in person. Um, he's, he's called Grandmaster Jun Ri. Thank you for, for the great picture. Um, and he was a super pioneer in bringing uh, um, Korean martial arts Taekwondo to, to America. And um, so Jun Ri was the first actual real life master, someone who's actually called a master, a grandmaster nonetheless. That I actually got to meet in person, and he was a small person, um, very you know small. You know, at the, even at the time I met him, he was older, um, but he was ripped, and he was in super incredible shape, and he he walked with a certain um, air about him, a certain presence and and dignity and respect, and um, and he showed those same things to everyone around him, and so I got to see embodied what a master is, and it wasn't just a mastery of the the arts, the form that he was mastering, but it was the way that he carried himself through space, um, and the way that he interacted with the people in the world around him that became a first major example of that, um, and I got to see this kind of you know other examples of that. there he is with Muhammad Ali, very famous picture, but you see how 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 tiny he is, right? Um, but super, super mighty, super powerful. And, um, 
And anyway, so, you know, between him, between other images in popular culture, Bruce Lee and all these other, you know, people at the time that were super popular in mainstream culture, um, as martial arts was much more mainstream back then, um, I got to understand this idea of what a master was. Um, and I got to specifically understand it through a kind of an, uh, an, an East Asian cultural lens. Um, martial arts itself was not just a study of uh, kicking and punching and blocking and these kinds of uh, external forms, but ultimately what it mostly was about was the uh, this kind of um, mastery of the mind, the body, and the spirit. And martial arts became that first real practice that I became exposed to where these three things were really essential to the to to what it was, um, and it, and each one was super important um, and uh, and I got to really explore each of these each of those areas in in depth through through the martial arts practice. Um, so anyway, this idea of mastery became embedded in me, and this this wanting this impulse and this desire to um, to to for self mastery for self improvement and and. Uh, from that time on, many things I was uh, introduced to, um, I realized that like it didn't matter what I did, those same principles, those same uh, little kernels were implanted in me, into me from a very young age, and it was through 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 that through the martial arts. Um, so whether it be later on um, my basketball practice, which became um, something I also became you know super super big into early, early very young, um, but basketball as well, it was a, it was a practice of the body. Um, where we had to learn very and master very physical skills um but we also learned you know it was, it was a very mental game too you had to learn the, the mental aspect of the game and you had to learn the the collaborative aspect of the game and and uh the spiritual aspect of the game as well and understanding how like that that intangible that invisible something that that's in the air in an in a in a sports arena or during a sports match or something when you're in the zone as an athlete and there's something there's something you're tapped into that's a hyper awareness that seems above um, that seems something almost spiritual um, you know these those were things I experienced again through 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 basketball um, that I experienced through martial arts um, but later on down the line I started to um, I, I was first introduced to theater. Um, and that was in my junior year of high school, actually my sophomore year of high school. Um, and uh, I just took a random theater class, acting class, just for the sake of it. And I really loved it. I, I, I found that, um, you know, my teacher encouraged me. I, so I had, I had people that encouraged me, first of all, um, and, and said I had a, you know, kind of natural abilities and, and aptitude for it. And, and uh, someone who sensed that I um, got some sort of growth and enjoyment from it. Um, and so I, I stayed with it and I decided I, I happened to go to a school that was very, um, very well funded and had a great theater program and had lots of opportunities. And so again, I had the support um, needed for me to, to, um, to, to, to develop in these different areas and to explore these different things that I may not have even had an opportunity to. Um, but I found that I love theater and I became one of the theater kids and, and decided to, to audition for the plays. And it was always the process more than anything of creating theater, of, of working together and problem solving and, um, and fig 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 figuring out the physicality of the body and the voice and um, all of these other aspects of the theater game and the research and learning about the world and all this. Um, that I love more than even getting out on stage and performing and, and, and everything like that. Um, it was those things that, that really attracted me to, to theater. And so I began my theater practice not knowing that it was something I could actually um, study uh, in school, that I could actually go to, to uh, learn more about in college. Um, and so I, when I first went to college, I went to Boston University and I was a um, a double major in anthropology and linguistics. All right. So up until this point in my life, not only had I, you know, been very interested in and attracted to um, uh, sports like martial arts and and um, and uh, and basketball and kind of full 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 practices, total practices like those, um, but I was also just a general nerd. Um, I also, you know, I get it from my mama. Um, she, she loved, she was very interested and fascinated with peoples and cultures. And, you know, we had a subscription to National Geographic. So I would get that every month and be fascinated by the, the pictures and things I was learning about the world and new places. And um, there was a point in my younger years where I took a trip to Maine and 
uh, was in a bookstore and found a book of like 60, you know, languages, introductory phrases and things like that. And I became, you know, that started an obsession with language and all of that. Um, so all of these, you know, these kinds of in this interest in the world, this interest in learning and, and uh, this interest in like, uh, improving skills and, and getting really good at things. And even in my video, I like, I, I'm a gamer as well. Like I like video games, but I like games that you really have to like train for and like really get good at and put a lot of effort into mastering. Um, so all these things came together in theater practice for me, but I didn't realize that this was something that I could actually study in college. And so I did three years of anthropology and linguistics before I realized how obsessed I was with theater and how I was always around watching others master their craft, watching others in hallways, you know, reading about theater and, and reading, you know, or practicing their parts or whatever it was, I found myself always around in that space or going to shows and feeling what it was like to be in the audience and to be, to have my mind really activated um, in different ways and to to really love the physicality of, you know, of, of the of bodies moving through space. And if there was dance, to love dance and that kind of expression of the body and what we could get through that. Um, and so um, I realized that I should be doing that. I should be doing it like everyone else was studying it, you know, that I was looking at. And that, and so I, I started all over again. I, I transferred to Rutgers and start, basically started over again and uh, got my BFA in acting. And, uh, it was, you know, once I finally got into the world of theater that I got to really start to um, to learn the craft of acting and to learn what theater was on a much deeper level than I had experienced before and where I got to really start to see that indeed it was a practice similar to martial arts before that or ba basketball before that, I got similar things out of it. Um, and it was things that I could really like learn to master, but like that I don't think I could ever really fully truly master because you can always get better. So that became things like, um, you know, in, in movement class, I got to take movement class and, and really explore again, explore the, the, the magic that is the human body. You know, this is such a gift that we have, you know, that I, that I feel like I took it, took for granted for so long in my life. Um, but the fact that we are, you know, bipedal, that we can stand on our two feet a lot, you know, um, most of us, um, or that we all have some sort of ability to, um, you know, there's, there's the human body is inclined to, to express, to, to be, um, to, to be in, insufficient for the spirit that it holds, right? To be able to, to want to express fully what's inside, but to not be able to do that. Um, but we learn in, in, in theater practice how to utilize the body to its fullest extent to achieve mastery of this instrument that we have. Um, and there's many different ways and, and exercises and philosophies on how to do that. But that's one thing that we do and that I've discovered was possible through theater and knew, you know, I had learned how to understand my body and start, start doing that through martial arts practice. And that understanding deepened and continued through the theater practice and continues to this day. Same thing with my voice, same thing um, with all of the other, you know, this, this uh, um, intangible such as like, uh, the, the, under, the connection with a partner and being living in the now, living in totally in the moment. Um, these are all things that I, that I started to discover through, through theater. And I learned that, um, and so, you know, I, I became, I graduated, I, you know, became a professional in the theater world and was, you know, fortunate to work in so many different theaters as an actor. And I had my ideas of what I wanted to do. And I loved the craft of acting. And I wanted to master it. And I wanted to work at all these different theaters and, and, and theater, 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 acting, acting, acting was kind of all I was about. Um, and it was fine for a while until um, the year 2012. Um, and this year was a very major turning point in my life, a very um, important time where like the art of theater and what I love to do also really coincided with um, my kind of newfound understanding of my place in the world and a newfound purpose of that and why I'm here and how my work could be more um, could be more than just my own pursuits and what I was about. It could be used for um, to really to, for for the, the the instrument that it is for the for all of its its possibilities. Um, and so, 2012 was a moment where um, I developed. Um, you know, I, I had a successful acting career by this point, um, and uh, but then Trayvon Martin was killed, um, and um, I was reading, you know, I, I'd read, you know, um, 
the new Jim Crow and was we're learning about, you know, systems, you know, our mass incarceration in this country and all sorts of, and that just snowballed into learning about all sorts of other things that I feel like I knew, but didn't really know and had never really been taught despite my privileged education. Um, and so I went on this whole journey of like, trying to understand where my, this theater that I thought I understood that was about like, you know, this craft and, you know, entertaining and serving the play and serving the audience and all this, you know, kind of stuff like that in that kind of way and, you know, being entertaining and all that. Um, it started to not be enough. It started to not be enough for me just to work at theaters and get a paycheck and go, you know, work with great people. And that was all fantastic. But what was there more to that? Like, what, what, where else did my could my could theater be used for? And I started to go back to those things that I experienced when I was first training and realizing that it could be used for personal and community development, um, and that it could be used and and mastery, um, and that it could uh, could could be used for for some sort of change. And so um, I started to approach my theater that way, and I, I realized that um, um, you know. Uh, that the theater was a total practice of mind, body, and spirit, and that it was ultimately, it was a tool. And this is how I think of theater now. It's, it's an art form, it's a, it's a form of entertainment and all that, but ultimately it's a technology. It's a, it's a technology for, it's an ancient technology that we as humans have, that we have had and have been able to use for thousands of years. Um, it's a technology for, for communication, right? Um, it's a technology for, um, for, uh, it's an art form in itself. It's a technology for, for, for personal expression and all that kind of stuff like that, um, that you get through it. But it's a, it's a technology for sight um, as well. And uh, what I mean by that, by that is theater itself, the actual word comes from the ancient Greek word teatron, which meant, which meant the place for seeing. And that meant the actual literal place, the actual physical space that theater takes, the actual event of theater takes place in because theater ultimately comes down to an audience a performer in a space, right? That's really what it fundamentally comes down to. Um, so theater was the actual place for seeing a performance, a spectacle that was happening. Um, but it was also the place for seeing the community, for literally seeing everybody else in the community, for gathering with everyone else and seeing, seeing, seeing them and seeing yourself with them and in the presence of a larger community. Um, and it was also a place to receive, uh, receive insight, to learn more about yourself, um, to learn more about the past, to, you know, to be educated in those kinds of ways, um, and also to receive what I call divine sight. And this is the spiritual sight. This is that receiving of purpose and receiving of understanding of uh, connection with uh, the intangible of those those spirits that 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 theater and other events like it, that church and athletic events that they can conjure in the air, in the space. Um, um, but also literally in thinking about how theater connects to its actual earliest roots, which is in spiritual practice, which is in ritual. Um, and theaters kind of no matter where you go in the world have been rooted in, in, uh, in um, have had a connection to the, to the divine. So when I talk about theater as a mind, body and spirit practice, um, it's in it's in all these 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 different ways that I'm that I'm talking about it. So, um, you know, as I as I, I you know had my own um, thank you friend as I um, you know have had my own um, experience as an actor, and then I had my revelation in 2012 that really changed me um, and and really made me feel like a new person. Where I went on a whole different quest and started to think of, of the purpose of myself and my work in the world in a different way. Um, I also realized that's when I also fell in love with directing and really like loving the idea that, you know, theater is a craft, a form, um, theater is a place of, of, of the interchange of ideas. Um, and it's a place where like I could have even more agency or I felt that I could have more agency um, as a director um, than even as, a, as I did as a performer. And I could see the larger picture and, 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 uh, and, 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 and in a different way than I could as a performer. So, um, 2012, I also became a, a director and started started that path. Um, but you know, long you know, in in the end, the most important thing to happen was the alignment of my life and my life's work and kind of my own kind of goals um, and that drive for self mastery with my with with theater itself and realizing that it, that that that's what it could be. Um, so you know, when it comes to uh, the body, you know, the theater asks 
questions of, or when it comes to, to ask to, to questions of the mind, I should say, theater not only asks questions about um, its itself, interrogates itself, and asks kind of intellectual questions about kind of what is theater um, itself. It asks about what is theater practice, how we should actually do it, how it should. So you have tons of philosophies and 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 and, and different ways that theater should be practiced. But theater also is an arena again for ideas. When you're looking at plays specifically or drama. Um, you're seeing dialogue and, and everything play out and action and stuff play out and drama and it's entertaining and all of that. But ultimately what you're really seeing is uh, kind of playing out of ideas and, and um, kind of uh, theater trying to touch at the real root of, 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 um, of humanity and the big questions and, and things that we're trying to get at. And so it really activates the mind that way. And so I found that like through my theater practice, I've been able to really engage with those questions um, the big questions and really, really uh, through through theater and through my theater work and the necessary research and and, and stuff that I've had to do um, with that. Um, through the body, I've had to, you know, I, I constantly work on my body um, in order to be able to, 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 to do my work, but also teach it. Um, I have to learn kind of what the principles of, of the body are, how we, how we use it, what's proper way of using it, what's an improper way of using it that may, use, may lead to injury, things like that that can really are useful to us in everyday life as well. And I look at my mother who works, um, you know, has worked multiple jobs her entire life and who has taken a strain um, on her body. Theater is a way, through the practice of theater, I've seen how theater practice and some of the principles that um, and exercises that we use in that can actually be beneficial and has been beneficial to, to the alleviate, alleviation of some of those, those issues and the ultimate mastery um, of the use of this, this particular instrument. Um, through the voice, the same way, you know, theater as a, as a form of communication, as a medium of communication, um, language is a, is a very big part of that. And to be able to um, understand how to use language, how language works, um, how we can structure it, how to use arguments and those kinds of things like that, all the different things that, um, that, that are called upon in the theater arena with regards to, to the voice and with language. Um, those are again, skills that I feel are very applicable, app, that I can, I can hone through theater and then apply also through, um, you know, in, in the world beyond theater and, and, and with the larger community as I work out, you know, um, with students and, and beyond. And then again, with this idea of the spirit and, and theater being rooted in spirit and in ritual practice to very, to begin with, um, it being, you know, a kind of expression, a connection to the divine, a kind of honoring of ancestors or, or, or all the different ways that theater manifests itself in its very roots as a spiritual practice. Um, theater, I, I take those things very seriously and I still, I draw upon, um, you know, kind of my, any other, any, you know, spiritual things that, that I come by, different beliefs and things that I, that I kind of um, am attracted to or that I feel um, aid my practice and understanding of theater and life. Um, I bring those into my work as well. And, and I find that theater is a place where I can um, not only speak about spiritual concepts and, and explore those things, um, but I can apply, you know, moral spirituality, the way I, I want to live as a person in the world, the way I want to, um, you know, I can create a space of spiritual um, where, where, where that is actually a spiritual connection. I can use the, the theater as a space to conjure um, spirit, to conjure ancestors, to speak to the divine, however you, you know, you kind of feel you, you believe in that sort of thing. But, um, you know, I'm just about a time here, obviously, you know, this is a, you know, there's so much to talk about theater as is, I always talk about how theater is, 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 is as large as humanity itself, is as large as life, it encompasses all of that. Um, and so it's impossible to, to ever really talk about it or to talk about it in its entirety in any kind of real reasonable amount of time. But I kind of just wanted to talk a bit about, introduce a bit about my myself and my work and my practice and a bit about theater and how, um, you know, my own introduction and, and, and drive towards mastery, um, how that drives my theater practice and, and, and how theater is actually a very amazingly receptive medium to do that. And something that I really love to uh, try to stress with my students and try to stress with community as I'm trying to engage with them and why theater practice is beneficial beyond just amazing entertainment um, and, 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 and all of those things that we may get. Um, it's also a very beneficial practice for, you know, for, for self-development and community development. So um, that's kind of, you know, about, about, about where I am. I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. There's so much more I really want to talk, talk about and dive into. And I have also other readings and things that I wanted to do. Um, but I think that, you know, this is, you know, I, I, I appreciate the time that I've had with you. And I think I'll, I'll let Fran, Fran take over and ask. Yeah, Mark. Questions. 
Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Mark, for sharing your story with us. Hello, everybody. Fran Paleo Moyer, Badger Talks producer. Uh, that is so interesting to hear your path. And we've had other faculty on, I'm thinking of Mark Hetzler's talk, who was our professor of trombone, who talked about the influence his wife's culture had on him and a composition that he wrote about her culture and how that's completely changed his path uh, professionally. And I'm hearing the same thing with you, with the Taekwondo and with the basketball and these things that have influenced you. And these Badger Talks lives are, in my opinion, are so valuable because we're hearing your personal story. And of course, while research and everything is very important as well, these personal journeys are so inspiring for those that are coming after you. So I really, really appreciate you sharing this with us today. Um, feel free to post some questions in the chat. Uh, Mark, we did have a comment from Bridget Fielder, which I know was put up on the screen earlier, but I wanted to reiterate what she had said. She said, and this is when you were talking about the escape early on, right? Um, so Bridget said, I had the pleasure to see Mark's production of The Escape in New York before he came to UW. It was amazing. I teach early African-American literature and have taught William Well Brown's play and it was so very helpful to my thinking about the play to see this performed. So um, I, I know that your work is inspiring and it's just very, very wonderful to have you on today. I have a few questions for you. Um, I'm curious, uh, you do mention The Escape. Are you thinking that was the most meaningful work that you've done or is there another work that you had that you feel was the most meaningful work that you did? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I did I did use that particular quote to start us off in that particular play um, because it is it's a very meaningful play to me. I feel that um, it, it's 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 meaningful to me just for the its sheer historical importance alone. But I think that when it came to me in my life um, originally, um, I originally discovered it. Um, you know, I, I came across it when um, which surprisingly so many people have never heard of. Um, but I came across it in this journey that I talked about um, of, of this, this journey for knowledge and, and this kind of change that happened after 2012, um, where I started really trying to educate myself and learning all the things that I felt I hadn't learned before. Um, I, this is one of the things that I, that I came across, which is this particular play that I had, even in my theater education, had never learned about before. Um, but this play is not only... Um, you know, it's it's historically important, but it also is um, it. I love it because it it touches on so many important themes uh, and relevant themes that are very relevant to America even to this day. You know, it touches on you know even in its title, the notion of freedom and what that means, and uh, and and it, it, it critiques our society in, in many different ways and kind of our practices. And so I felt connected to it for that reason. Um, and uh, when I was in grad school, when I did decide that directing was a, a path that I wanted to take, I decided to go back to grad school. That's when I ended up at Columbia. And uh, The Escape was actually my thesis production. And it was a production where everything I felt came together. You know, you talked about how my journey through Taekwondo and basketball and other things, things like that. All of those things I realized later on in my life that all of those things that I had been doing um, they had all been leading me to where I am now. You know, they had been preparing me, whether it just be my interest in language, whatever like that, that I just liked when I was a kid. All of that stuff became super important to me later on in my practice. It was all like meant for something. It was all leading somewhere. And I felt like when I, when I had the chance to actually direct the escape, which had only been done twice in history before, before me, um, that was a moment where everything I felt came together. Like my all the, all the knowledge that I had, my whole journey came together, my ability to understand my place of my work in the world and what this play meant to me personally and historically, but also what it could mean to the people that see it and how they could take it and use it, you know, in, in, as they go back out and to live their own lives. Um, the work with the actors and, and, the, and everybody like that and helping them understand and embody these characters. And, you know, in theater, like, it's not only a study, what I consider the ultimate study of humanity, but it's also the ultimate practice of humanity. We have to not only study all aspects of what it means to be human and ask those big questions, but we have to actually practice it in space and time, you know, and explore what it means and what, you know. So, um, so yeah, I Mark, think that- Mark, could you, uh, I'm just yeah. curious, could you, we didn't have a ton of time to talk about everything I know and all of the work yeah. 
Spectrum, but could you speak just a little bit to your work with the Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago? Of course, most definitely. So like um, once I, so when I left grad school, I, um, you know, started my journey as, you know, I, I did some professional directing work before grad school, um, but really after grad school is kind of my real kind of um, initiation into the, the profession, which I had already been a part of for, you know, well over a decade as an actor, but as a director, um, I kind of, I, I left after grad school and kind of started that way. And Steppenwolf was one of the first homes that I found, one of the first places that I found um, after grad school. I was fortunate to um, get a fellowship there um, with the company in the art uh, as a, a, in the artistic department, and I got to spend an entire season with them. Um, you know, in their as they as they planned their season, I was in all of those meetings and getting a chance to see, uh, be a part of those conversations and choosing plays and um, un understanding how people work. Get to, getting to see Anna Shapiro and her leadership uh, of that theater and how she leads and. How she, when she decides to listen and when she decides to um, to really step in and take charge and 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 be, be the leader in that way, um, it was a, it's, it was an amazing experience and I got to 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 be a part of that theater in so many different ways, including being an artistic producer on We Are Proud to Present. I was actually to, you know I got to as you as in my introduction got to be an assistant director uh, with Tina Landau, Terrell Allen McCraney, these amazing figures. Um, and I, I got to see a company that um, is very much uh, in a process of um, interrogating itself and which we love, especially in a company so big and so prestigious after all these years to really take the moment to, to, to think about its own place in its community and what it's doing and um, how it wants to, who it wants to be, what its identity wants to be in 50 years from now. Um, I came at an amazing time where those questions were really relevant to the company and you know got to, to see it see those those questions things explored from all aspects of the company so it was a that's, really great experience yeah, that's really yeah. exciting thanks yeah, for yeah. sharing that sure. uh question for you about sort of the times in 2020 and covid and what we've seen theaters around the world sort of have to do to adapt right i think i mentioned to you um prior to our going live that we'd gotten tickets to uh, a production of Christmas Carol, a theater in London is live streaming. So now it's like a worldwide audience that can just tune in, which right. is cool. Um, but what are your thoughts on COVID and what impact that's going to have on theater moving forward? Yeah, you know, what's amazing about theater is again, like one of the, one of the, the, the amazing skills, human skills it draws upon, human superpowers it draws upon is uh is our abilities to um to problem solve artistically to problem solve creatively mm -hmm. um and you know one thing that theater people are great at is doing that and we've had to for centuries and centuries you know through tons of adverse conditions and things like that and um to have to, to, to be able to survive and 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 to be able to adapt that's one thing that theater artists and uh, the the and theater as an art form and as a practice has had to do as for so long so that's one thing that, that we're doing, we're seeing now that we saw immediately once the shutdown happened and the world changed kind of seemingly like that, right? We immediately saw these questions being asked of where does, what is theater's place in the world now, in this current world? Um, where, you know, how do we continue to, what are the, what are the real uh, imp fundamentally important aspects of theater? Um, how do we still, um, how do we still have that now, you know, in this particular space? How do we still connect with an audience? Um, how do we still give them, you know, all the things that, um, so you, how do we still use theater to its fullest um, value in this particular time? And I think that like, we're all still struggling with that. I, you know, I've seen so many different answers to that. Some very successful, some not so successful. Um, but ultimately, like, again, like theater is about, it, it'll survive. It's about connection ultimately. Um, it's about, again, ideas, the big questions. Um, it's about coming together um, and it's, it can be about storytelling, can be about all of those things. And that, that's something that will always be relevant, that will never be able to die. Um, and, uh, and it's sure to come back with a vengeance in 20 And sure to come right? back with a vengeance, exactly. Um, you know, all, yeah. as, theaters, as theaters plan their, their next seasons and for, the, for things to open back and get audiences back in, you know, yeah. of course, everyone's planning for that. Um, and that's definitely going to happen. Um, but uh, there's, some, there's some fascinating things being, being done now. And I think that, yeah. you know, continuing to offer programming like this, where, you know, you get to talk with, you know, and, and get to have artists really connect with the, 
with the community um, and get to getting to, uh, you know, have get to see even recorded live performance or get to be exposed that way. Um, get to talk about what theater really is and what its benefits are beyond just um, some of the things that we can't have right now um, is super important and, and we're out there doing that work. Uh, one quick question for you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, this might be a tough one, but one person dead or alive you'd like to have dinner with? Oh man, one person dead or alive that I would like to have dinner with. Um, you know what, the first, literally the first person that jumped into my mind right now was Frederick Douglass. Um, you know, there's so many people that I would love to have, you know, I'm a, yeah, anyway, but I'll, I'll stick with Frederick Douglass um, since he was the first that popped in. Now, I just think that like, um, what an amazing, what an amazing man. Like, I mean, like, I would just be in awe, but to like, to read his words, I've read so many of, of his words and his speeches and essays and, um, and so much about his life and to know that, um, you know, he was someone that was born and, you know, that was born into a system that, that um, into a world that, that was all against him, that, that everything was against him, but he uh, was able to um, find his way, his own way out of that and to see the light and to educate himself and to empower himself and, and many, many others and to become a master. You know, he, he is a master, in my opinion, a uh, master orator, a master just human being. Um, and so like for me, I think to be able to sit down with him and to pick his brain and to just hear his voice and to, to, to witness him just like I did with Master Jun Ri in Taekwondo early on, to be able to witness through example, um, you know, and, and then kind, of, kind of like Taoist idea of a master, a Taoist, a master leads by example, a master says more by not saying. And I think, you know, to be able to witness a master like Frederick Douglass um, just in his presence and how he moves through the space would also, I learn a lot, I think, and I just be gushy and giggly. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, final thoughts in terms of students who are wanting to pursue theater? Any suggestions that you might have, uh, even middle schoolers, high schoolers, you know, thinking about it? Yes, most definitely. So again, I didn't know that theater was a possibility. First of all, my, my understanding of what theater was, was limited. You know, it's, it's more than just um, plays, you know, like theater is beyond even just plays, you know, plays are very, and, and the, play, you know, plays are an important part of theater history, but there's so much theater beyond that. So really like reaching out and seeing so many kinds of theater and opening your mind that way and understanding the possibilities is very important. Um, but again, I didn't see the possibilities in the, in the art form itself, but I didn't see the possibilities or understand the possibilities that I could pursue it, that it was a, that it was a worthwhile, meaningful, valuable pursuit in life. And as I've said, you know, like theater, um, it, it touches on, it deals with humanity and our connection with each other and the cosmos and everything like that. And so like um, everything is relevant and you can learn so much just through that. And so it's valuable in interrogating just that alone and exploring our own, you know, bodies by, you know, bodies, minds, and spirits, as I said. Um, but I'd say that like, you know, you know, just understanding first of all, that it's a possibility that you can do it. And that like, even within theater itself, there's so many different ways of, if, if you're looking at practically, even just from a making a living standpoint, point of view, um, how can it practically, you know, how can you practically make a living? Well, I've done that in many different ways. I've done that through actually the art itself. So being an artist, so being an actor, I've made, you know, a, 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 um, a really great living. I was, you know, very fortunate to spend, you know, make the majority of my income for many years just from acting and to be able to live that life, which is very, very amazing. Um, or from directing, so from the art itself, um, knowing that like, you know, you can be, you don't have to be on stage. You can be, you um, an engineer, like you can, you can, you can learn those amazing trade skills that are valuable in theater and building worlds, but also apply those to the world outside. Those those same skills can be very useful in other arenas. Um, so just, I guess, knowing that theater is so much more that it can be anything you want it to be, and that I use everything that I'm interested in, and that I'm um, find uh, helps me in my life. Um, I find a, I find that theater a comp a, a, accommodates that and that I can use it for that reason. So just know for a young person or anybody who's interested in theater and the possibilities, just know that it is a possibility. Know that there's other uh, careers out there. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I find myself as a professor now. So there's teaching as well. And, you know, really understanding the craft in those ways and being able to explore it academically and to be able to pass that, this amazing tradition down that's thousands of years old I and mean, being able to pass that down to a new generation and helping them understand and see um, so yeah, I think that, you know, just understanding, 
I would just say, just know that theater is so much, um, it involves so much and that there's so many ways you can approach it and so many ways that it can be meaningful to your life as a profession, as just a practice that you wanna do to maintain your health, mental, physical, spiritual health, um, or just to, to, you know, to love for because you love the art of it and want to you know explore the world or express yourself in that way so thanks for that uh, and uh yeah. i think it's uh I, if it's okay i'm just gonna also mention um for those watching from around the state of wisconsin which most of our audience is if there's parents out there listening or students um all of the UW system offer great opportunities for affordability but uw madison in particular uh which we're, we're promoting the talk from does offer um, Bucky's tuition promise for households with uh, uh, annual earnings of under $60,000. Um, tuition is free. Um, Badger promise for first generation students, two to four semesters of tuition is free. And then there's a fast track program, which covers all expenses based on financial needs. Yeah. So don't be discouraged if you think that you can't afford it, please look into college wherever you're looking to go. Um, yeah. Don't get affordability as an obstacle for you. Most definitely. And, and Fran, there's also, you know, there's, there's we also offer um, just like scholarships every semester, there's scholarships or every year that we also, in addition to other funding options for students that we as a department give out to, to students. Um, um, and we have, a, a, you know, every single, every single year we give those. So that, that, that's also very helpful. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so, you know, I would say definitely look into those options and just know that like at UW Madison, we are a program that, um, you know, we have a lot of exciting, um, new faculty in that, uh, has a, a huge range of, um, amazing experience in all facets of theater. And there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of change and excitement about kind of, uh, you know, the new, the new direction, um, and, and, and ideas that we have for the program. Um, and so we look forward to, you know, hopefully seeing anybody out there who's interested really looking into our program and, um, and so that we can talk more about it um, and, and as, as well. And, 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 and yeah, so anyway, I just want to put that out there. Well, Mark Kirsten, thank you so much for taking time with us. We're honored to have you close Badger Talks Live for 2020. Thanks for sharing your journey with us. Thank you, everyone. It was such a pleasure and uh, have an amazing holiday season. And uh, Fran, thank you again for, for having me. And uh, I wish everyone the best and uh, we'll practice in theater. And, and, and uh, <laughs> Thanks a bunch, Mark. Great to chat yeah. with you. Yeah. Everybody you. tune in. Uh, we're going to take a little break for the holidays for Badger Talks Live, but we'll be back Tuesday, January 26th at noon. Please check us out at badgertalks.wist.edu where we'll post the upcoming series of talks for the first quarter of 2021. And you can sign up for our emails there as well. On January 26th, Tracy Macklin from the Division of Diversity is gonna be talking about inclusive environments. So be sure to tune in. And always you're welcome to email me for program suggestions. I'm at fpaleo at wisc.edu. All right, happy holidays and be well, everybody. Thanks.